brothers, sisters, comrades, and oh, tooth. Forgot to put my fucking tooth in. That was embarrassing. Imagine if I'd done the whole video without my tooth. That would be a new one. One, two, three. Brothers, sisters, comrades, and friends. Welcome to Bat Country. Today is a big one. Right now, all of the sobriety apps on my phone, all 50 of them, are sending me notifications to inform me that I have a major sobriety milestone to celebrate today. Well done me. Despite my cynicism, I am very proud. I haven't been actively counting days for a while now, and I have a difficult relationship with milestones and celebrations. A lot of people will tell you to celebrate every little success in sobriety, and that's great. But I'm bad at taking compliments, and milestones feel a bit like compliments to me. It feels like other people saying, good job, and because of my weird, addicted personality, it makes my blood instantly boil. <laughs> uh, we are weird animals, aren't we? Anyway, I thought to commemorate the event, instead of putting out a, a normal video, I would ask the community, you fine people, for suggestions. What kind of topics would you like to talk about today? I had several responses, and the question I've picked is from friend of the show and up-and-coming sobriety channel disappointing your demons the link to that channel is in the description go and subscribe now i i sincerely recommend it uh, I, i'm occasionally told in the comments that people think i have a nice voice and this guy's is superb <laughs> i promise disappointing your demons asks how has sobriety changed you for the better and what are some of the gifts you've received as a result of not drinking. I chose this question because a lot of my stuff on this channel is quite dark and quite challenging. And I really like talking about that, that difficult stuff, the horrible nature of alcoholism and withdrawal, the kind of stuff that other people don't really talk about very often. That's kind of my heartland. Uh, this, this particular video, this one's, this one's just for me. And since this is YouTube, I have organized this information into an internet-friendly numbered list. So let's go. Here are seven gifts sobriety has given me. Number one, clarity of thought. My God, what a, what a gift it is to be able to think, to be able to make a decision. Those are two alien concepts to me when I'm drinking. It is unfortunately beyond doubt that i have done irrevocable damage to my brain with the sheer volume of poison i've put into my bloodstream it is unlikely i will ever recapture the full capacity of of my brain and my brain was already not very good to start with even now my memory is not just bad but often wrong like it it pulls out incorrect information sometimes, not just misremembered, but somehow confused. But compared to the way my brain worked when I was drinking, and then again in withdrawal, I'm a well-oiled machine. <laughs> I'm still a dumb idiot most of the time, but compared to what I'm like when I have a drink in my hand, today I'm like Michelangelo. In drink, by the end, my brain just simply didn't function. I remember my brain feeling like a, a wheezy lung that needed to cough. I'd wake up with only a single thought in my brain to go and buy booze. And then in the shop, I would be confounded by the interaction with the shop assistant. I wouldn't be able to count the money in my hands that I'd scraped together for a bottle of vodka or make sense of the questions I was being asked. And I couldn't speak because the thoughts wouldn't coalesce, they would get jammed somewhere. It's like permanent brain fog, except the fog is like the fog from the movie The Fog. Writing is a big part of my life. For weeks after I got sober, 
I was completely unable to coordinate my hands well enough to hit the keys of a keyboard with any reliable accuracy. And then for months after that, I would be writing and then I would read it back to myself and I would discover that it was nonsense. Not just spelling mistakes, but entirely wrong words and phrases, like written spoonerisms. It was actually really scary. I studied neurolinguistics at university and one of the modules involved us spending time sitting with uh, someone who had suffered a stroke and his brain, due to the damage to the Wernicke's area, which is a region of the brain affected by excessive alcohol use too, his brain would substitute words with completely unrelated and irrelevant words in his sentences and he wouldn't notice he was doing it. He would say things like, good luck with the cooking, with the cooking, when he meant to say good luck with the exam. And I could see the ripples of frustration across his face that he wasn't making himself understood because to him he was making perfect sense. Somewhere along the lines words were being confused out and swapped in and I don't mean to compare my selfish little alcohol problem to a, someone who has suffered a stroke, but for a while, that's what it was like. Reading back things that I had never intended to type, but now I feel sharp and responsive and reactive and able to solve problems again. Thinking clearly is a gift. Number two, better sleep. Alcoholic sleep isn't sleep. It's like putting the TV on, on standby instead of turning it off. It's still using up all of the energy, but not doing anything useful. I don't need to tell an audience like this the importance, the physiological importance of sleep. Go and watch um, Andrew Huberman's podcast or Rich Roll or any one of the other interchangeable, rich, straight, white, hyper-masculine podcasters. They all talk about the importance of sleep in lots of scientific detail. The point is, that all that matters is that sleep is good for everything. It benefits your whole life. It makes your whole life better. And now, thanks to sobriety, I am able to sleep well and be more active and productive and creative as a result as a direct result of sobriety. You know how over time your computer gets all slow and clogged up and a simple off and on again sorts out the problem by the morning. That's what sleep does for me. Sleep is a reboot. Number three, less chaos. I haven't talked about this very much on this channel yet, but I have a very long criminal record, including some very serious charges and convictions as a direct result of alcoholism. I'm not trying to keep that a secret, I just haven't got to it yet on the channel. And as well as those serious criminal charges and convictions, I've also been reported as a missing person more than once. I've been in professional trouble. I put my family through hell. I've been deported from two Central Asian countries and from the EU. I've run up debt, missed important obligations, hurt people, disappointed everyone, made rash and impulsive decisions that affected everyone around me. And for a long time in my life, chaos reigned. Chaos. I just did reckless things, reckless, selfish things. Anytime I had a decision to make, I inevitably chose the worst possible option. And that all gave me some very interesting stories, but put my family through torture, nearly ended my life and wrecked others. And that is not worth the trade for some interesting stories. I mean, it just isn't. Disabuse yourself of any romantic, poetic notions you might have that we need to suffer for our art. It's bullshit. And I will take my health and the happiness of the people around me over being mildly interesting at a dinner party 
every time. Now, today, I make good choices, usually, and uh, there is some level of structure in my life. It is still, my life is still more chaotic than most ordinary people's lives. I am, after all, still currently banned from the EU. <laughs> most people don't have to deal with that kind of thing. But in general, the chaos is more manageable. If you're gonna be dumb, you better be tough. Number four, I am no longer an emotional wreck. I used alcohol to handle my problems, but soon the alcohol became the problem. Today, I am more stable and emotionally available than I've ever been in my life. And that's probably a low bar. I, I fear I'm probably still not exactly a brilliantly warm human being. But my emotional regulation is now better than it has ever been before. My self-esteem is great, but in a healthy way, not necessarily in a narcissistic way. I hope. And I think my mood is usually relatively stable. That is to say, I am always grumpy. I am at least consistent. I have the time. I make the time to be available to other people and to listen, to really listen, to not be just waiting for my turn to talk, but absorbing other people. And as a result, I've come to enjoy the simple human interactions that I used to dread when I was drinking. Now, I was an anxious kid and an anxious teenager and an anxious adult. And for a while, a very short while, Alcohol helped that. It made the anxiety go away just for a while. And then at some point, it made it far, far worse. Until that's all there was. My whole life was just an endless sea of anxiety. Anxiety far over the horizon. And there's no way to live. I used to dread going to my mailbox in case, God forbid, there was a letter and my WhatsApp and Slack notifications gave me a nervous twitch in my eye, and I feared opening my emails every day. The thought of opening them in the morning would make me sick, and I'd retreat into the bed with a bottle and drink my feelings. But alcohol doesn't make your feelings better, it just postpones your feelings. Alcohol made my anxiety uncontrollable to the point that my life was unpleasant to live. It was horrible. And all of it washed away when I quit drinking. All of that anxiety and that stuffiness, that bottled emotion, it all started to just dissolve away like mist in the morning. Not straight away. Um, all those years in the bottle hiding from my feelings meant they were all backed up and had been accruing interest. So the early stages of sobriety were, for me, very heavily medicated. But I made it through, and I still feel anxiety in sobriety. And I still have depressive episodes. But in sobriety, I can face them. Now, I, I don't have peace of mind. I am still a mess real mess sometimes but I'm a sober mess and that's something sobriety is freedom for the emotional cage we have constructed for ourselves sobriety is freedom put down the bottle breathe the free air again my friend five money one of my cheerful little sobriety apps tells me that I've saved 12,000 euros since I started taking my sobriety seriously. I don't know where that money is, but at least I didn't drink it. Number six, physical health. I don't need to proselytize at length about the benefits of being able to exercise. What matters is this. My organs don't hurt anymore. I don't feel like I'm gonna die all the time. In fact, I am slowly getting fit again. I'll never be like I was when I was 25, obviously, but I'm getting there, making progress. 
and I can lift up the heavy things and I can run to the faraway place and I can cycle my bike up the hill and I can move my body. I'm starting to loosen up. And more than that, my skin looks better and I look younger. Seriously. I'm 62. Seven, time. This is the big one for me. It's the main benefit for me because it's the one that informs all of the others in the list. Having time. The amount of time I have on my hands in sobriety is crazy. It's so good. It's like an entirely brilliant new problem that I have that I've never had before. What do I do with all of this time that I've been given back? It sounds like a cliche. I know it does that as we get a little older, we begin to realize that time truly is the single most precious commodity in all providence. But cliche or not, by the time you get to my age, 62, you feel under a lot of pressure to get things done and you worry about all of the things that you haven't achieved. Now, in sobriety, I feel like I have the time to achieve all those things. When I was drinking, when I was deep in the addiction, I always felt like I was running out of time. The longer I'm sober, the more I feel like I have all the time in the world. So those were seven things that I have been given by sobriety. It's not everything by any means. I haven't even talked about how I've been able to mend relationships or I'm more reliable, more trustworthy than I ever was and that I can be depended on and that I'm a better communicator. I'll do more of these kinds of videos in the future when I feel like they're necessary. But for now, I want to thank Disappointing Your Demons for suggesting the question and I want to hear yours. What is one thing that sobriety has given you? What's one thing you've gained through getting sober? Let us know in the comments. And as always, good luck out there.